Do you want to create highly detailed renders of objects like this one, this one, and this one? Well, you won't be able to do that without adding hair and dust. So in this tutorial, I'll show you the quickest and easiest way to do that in Blender. Let's go. So first of all, you need an object. I have my Wacom pen. I modeled in Blender and Textures and Substance Painter here, but you can get a bunch of cool models off Sketchfab. I'll link some below. Once you have your object looking nice and creamy in Blender, let's make the dust and hair to add to it. So first of all, we're just gonna start with an icosphere. Let's scale this bad boy down. Make sure it's pretty small. And there we go. We've got our first dust particle and we can create some more variations later, but let's just add it on to our pen as quick as possible. Just go into your particle systems tab here and add a new one. It's gonna be an emitter here, but we don't really want that. We want hair now of course uh we don't actually want hair we want dust uh so we're going to change the render to render as object just take our eyedropper and just chuck it on that icosphere now we've got dust Woo. except that's clearly not what we want so we've got to change a couple of settings here to make sure it's not so like uniform make sure the dust is the right size and the right material so let's start off with making sure it's emitting from the right places. We want to just change that distribution to random. Another cool thing you can do is just turn off even distribution. This will just put the dust particles where there is a higher density of faces. So it's almost like ambient occlusion where the dust is going in the cracks of the model. Now we can change our scale here. So we can turn up the scale randomness and maybe turn down the scale to 0 0.035 or something. I settled with 0.025. Now we want to add some random rotation to this. It won't matter for this particular piece of dust, but it will for the uh, variations that we'll add soon. Check advanced, turn on rotation, randomize, and turn up the phase and the randomized phase. So now we have some basic dust, but it looks absolutely horrible because it's just white icospheres. Let's fix that real quickly. We'll just add in a diffuse. BSDF and a transparent, which just is completely see-through. And then we're just gonna mix these two together. If you've got the node wrangle add-on enabled, which if you don't, like, come on, man, what are you doing? Hold the control shift and right click and go over, drag it over there. Now we've mixed them together and we wanna just chuck that in the surface. Still looks kinda average. So if we put the transparent BSDF in the bottom one here, and the diffuse in the top, we just wanna drag this factor up. So it's using more of the transparent BSDF than the diffuse. And we also wanna chuck that roughness up. So now if we get it to like here, partly see-through, kinda of like dust. Just chucking in HDRI so we can see it a little bit better. Just play around with your settings till you think it looks good. Um, I'll also add in a object info node to just make the color a little bit more random for these. So if you just plug random into a color ramp and then that color into the color of the diffuse BSDF, now you can just add in a couple of values here and it will just pick at random between these two for each piece of dust. And remember, if the distribution of the dust starts looking weird, you can always come to the source and just turn on even distribution again. So it's just, you know, even across the whole thing. Now, I actually, in my other project file, I duplicated this one thing and just created a bunch of different variations. Now you can see what that actually does to the dust. It just adds a lot more variation. I love that word, variation is king. So yeah, just doing that makes it look really good. And now let's do the hair, because you can see that also looks really damn cool. Okay, back in this file, you just want to add in a Bezier curve and just drag that off to the side. And you just kind of want to make that around as small as the dust just by scaling it down. Rotate it up on the X, subdivide this thing so we have one more thing to move around. To make your dust and hair look more realistic, it's just about grabbing vertices and points and just grabbing them around and rotating them because in reality, dust and hair is just so random. Now to actually make this an object, we wanna to go to the curve settings, go to the bevel and add just a little bit of depth to it and make sure fill caps is on, not open at the end and a thickness of about that should be fine, up to you really. And then you just wanna convert that to a mesh. And now we have our one basic hair. And as I said before, you kinda of just wanna duplicate this, grab vertices while proportional editing is on and just move this stuff around. So let's say you just put in a little bit more effort and made a bunch of these dust and hair particles. Now what do you do? Well, if you just change this render setting from object to collection and make sure these are all in one collection and new collection dust, then you can just pick that out and it will be scattering your hair and dust across. Now you can actually add two particle systems. So one is dust and one is hair. So you have finer control, but using one is fine and you'll get a good result either way. So another hot tip for you guys, if you wanna be able to not use even distribution, so it's in the cracks, but it's getting a little bit too like filled up in the cracks, there's a really easy way to fix that. So I've already done it here, but I'll just show you another example. You just need to add a vertex group on your object in here, you just add another one. We can call it whatever, we can call it no dust, no dust here. And then 
what we need to do is make sure you have this selected. And now we can go into the weight paint mode. I'm just holding control and tab, move to weight paint. You can see our weight paint map is originally blue, but we just want to invert that. And if we just go up to weights and invert, it will now be red. And so that means it'll be putting dust and hair on the whole object. And now with our brush, the smaller radius and a weight of zero, we can just come in here and brush in blue. And this blue is where it's gonna choose not to put dust in here and then it just fades off back into the red. And if your model has a little bit better topology than mine, it'll, it'll look a bit better than that because it's just painting on the vertices. So then we can go in here and paint on these edges or maybe even just for example, I'll just show you guys, I'll just paint this giant strip down the middle here. And you can see right now it's actually doing nothing and we just need to change something really quickly. So if we go back to object mode, go into our particle system for our dust, go to the uh, vertex groups down the bottom here. You can see I've already chosen my original group for the density. If I turn that off, you can see there's more dust and hair on the cracks here. But now let's just change it to no dust here. And you can see where I draw now and where I drew, there is no dust. It's just gonna remove that where it's blue. So yeah, that's a super cool way to just quickly remove a high area of dust. Like for example, if there's too much here, you can just come in and paint it off. So now we have some basic dust on our object. It's pretty easy, simple, and using the particle system is great. Now where the most important thing is, is really in the texturing. And I think using this is such a simple setup and it does it quite well. Of course, you can play around, change roughness, change the factor of the mixing, all that stuff combined with some good texturing. This is a way to make some super realistic renders. So hopefully that helped you. Hopefully you use this to make something cool and make sure to like, subscribe and keep going with Blender. You got this.